Hello, my name is Gary Jaskowiak, and I'm an attorney at Birch Stewart Kolosh & Birch. I specialize in prosecution of chemical biotechnology and pharmaceutical patent applications. Today I'm speaking about the Federal Circuit decision of Ariosa v. Sequinam, decided on June 12, 2015. This case has important ramifications for the fields of medical diagnostics and personalized medicine. An amicus brief for the case explained that the economics of innovative diagnostic tests reflect exactly the economic justification for the patent system. The cost of applying a genetic diagnostic test is relatively low, but the ex ante R&D cost is enormous and is not reflected in the marginal cost of the medical test itself. Therefore, without patent protection for medical diagnostics, there is either little incentive for research in the field or an incentive to maintain diagnostic tests as trade secrets. The plaintiff scenario has sought a declaratory judgment on the issue that the U.S. 6258540 or 540 patent was invalid because the claims were patent ineligible subject matter. The first independent claim at issue on cell-free fetal DNA is a method for detecting a paternally inherited nucleic acid of fetal origin performed on a maternal serum or plasma sample from a pregnant female, which method comprises amplifying a paternally inherited nucleic acid from the serum or plasma sample and detecting the presence of a paternally inherited nucleic acid of fetal origin in the sample. The other independent claims follow a similar format. This invention revolutionized the field of prenatal diagnostics. The court applies a three-part test to determine the patent eligibility for process claims that may recite a judicial exception. First, process claims qualify as a 35 U.S.C. Section 101 statutory category. Second, the court determines whether the claim recites a judicial exception. These are laws of nature, natural phenomena, and abstract ideas. Third, a claim that recites judicial exception may still be patent eligible subject matter if an inventive concept is present. An inventive concept is an element or combination of elements that is sufficient to ensure that the patent in practice amounts to significantly more than the patent upon the ineligible concept itself. Unfortunately, the Supreme Court has provided little to no guidance for determining whether a process that recites a natural phenomenon is patent eligible subject matter. The majority opinion in Ariosa held that it is undisputed that the existence of cell-free fetal DNA in maternal blood is a natural phenomenon. Alternatively, Sequinam's position could have been strengthened if the court would have held that the cell-free fetal DNA itself is a natural phenomenon. The court subsequently held that the practice of the method claims does not result in an inventive concept, for example, significantly more that transforms the natural phenomenon of cell-free fetal DNA into a patentable invention. Thus, the court found that the method steps in the 540 patent, excluding the natural phenomenon, were well understood, conventional, and routine, and the claim in the 540 patent were patent-eligible subject matter. Sequinam argued that the inventive concept was present because no one was using the plasma or serum of pregnant mothers to amplify and detect paternally inherited cell-free fetal DNA. Unfortunately, the court failed to adequately address this argument. Next, the court explained that even such valuable contributions can fall short of statutory patentable subject matter, as it does here, because groundbreaking, innovative, or even brilliant discovery does not by itself satisfy the Section 101 inquiry. Finally, the court eliminated any preemption analysis with questions on preemption are inherent in and res resolved by the Section 101 analysis. The concurring opinion states that I see no reason in policy or statute why this breakthrough invention should be deemed patent ineligible. However, it concluded with, I join the court's opinion in invalidating the claims of the 540 patent only because I am bound by the sweeping language of the test set out in Mayo. In conclusion, here are some important questions for further consideration. How should a court identify a natural phenomenon in a process claim? Should a court identify cell-free fetal DNA as a natural phenomenon in maternal blood 
or should cell-free fetal DNA being in maternal blood be a natural phenomenon? Also, did amplifying cell-free DNA from maternal blood serum or plasma, or alternatively, the claim is the whole amount to significantly more? If so, an inventive concept would be present. The identification of the natural phenomenon has significant implications on this test. As it stands, we need a determination that the claims of the 540 patent are patent eligible subject matter in an M. Bank Federal Circuit decision or a Supreme Court decision for the future of medical diagnostics in the United States. Thank you for joining me. Stay tuned to bskb.com for upcoming videos of interesting intellectual property cases and other commentary on intellectual property issues.